you got any of the Pokemons, yeah, and they've graded with the with the casing. Nice. Thank you very much. Let's um, where can we line down? It's not always about buying an item for the resale value, sometimes it's for the collection and that was certainly the case in this video today. I was out thrifting with my good mate Jamie and we were in local cash converters and we saw for the very first time, for me at least anyway, some graded Pokemon cards in store and well, I had the camera on, this is what happened. So we've got a 1999, it's a Topps Pokemon Golem, which is pretty cool, but you think that there's value in some others. Yes, so I've just jumped on here. And um, on their website, I found this one. So for 15 bucks, 15 it's bucks. a Jigglypuff. And I reckon that I can go for around 40 to $50. So we're going to go back in, because what they're doing is this cash converters isn't, um, which you guys should probably know about as well, they've got store sites, and they don't put their stock out onto the floor. Yeah. So we've found this on the floor, but they aren't selling it online. So we bought this one, and then they said to us, maybe you should check online. So we did, and that's where the Jigglypuff has popped up. So we're going to go back into the store, ask them to go out the back, find this stock that's listed online, and we're going to buy it. We're back, boys. I can see that. <laughs> um, the Pokemon cards, we have looked online. There are apparently there are a couple more. Oh, okay. So they might be upstairs. Yeah. yeah. Upside, oh, might have a few then, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they probably won't be up No, no dramas. That's what that'd be, hey? Yeah, otherwise I'll go out and um, it could be out on the web shop still. Now, which ones were they? Um, Pretty much. Yeah, all of them. Yeah. yeah. If you got oh, any of the Pokemon ones, eh? Pokemon, yeah. yeah, and they've graded with the, right, with the casing. See if he's doing that. Thanks, mate. Hey, guys. Nice. Let's see him. Thank you very much. What the hell? Let's, um, where can we lie him down? Double the cop tanks on the money mine, those. Yeah, they do. That's cool. Yeah, that one is cool. That's right. 1999. How long ago did they come in? Oh, they've only just a long ago, yeah. Only just arrived? Yeah, not long ago, yeah. Probably a couple of days ago. We're only online now, so. <laughs> a Meowth. Team. You don't get the Pokemon cards coming often, though, would you? We don't leave, though. Yeah. yeah. Do some batches, like, yeah. That's a good one. Yeah, it's CGA. CGA, yeah. So if you want to buy one now. Mm. Yeah, I, I think definitely that. Yeah, we'll get that. And then I reckon, I reckon these. Yeah, that's a better one. I'll see you in this one. Thanks, mate. See you later. Yeah. Now, Jamie, you know your cards more than I do. Um, so have a chat about what you were seeing when you were going through all of that. So, unfortunately, they um, were the base cards, so no hollows or anything that would be worth a lot. Like, just as an example, this here as a hollow is worth 300 instead of 50. But because they are PSA and they're high grade, some of them are older, they were still, if you want to show them off, yeah. still definitely worth the purchase and they were reasonably quite cheap. Uh, they were pretty cheap. Oh, look, to me, I was almost thinking, how do we just buy them all and then go through it? Because you don't often find graded Pokemon cards in, a, in an op shop or a pawn shop. Especially in Australia. Especially in Australia, because what's the, what's the process to get these things graded? Which is um, basically this casing and the yeah, grading system. So, Generally, you have to send it to a middleman, so someone in within Australia that will then sort of make sure it's prepared and everything to get sent to PSA. Then you have to send it there. I think it's around eighty to one hundred dollars right now, and then wait up to over a year, two years. It's so it's a long wait, right now. and yeah. it's expensive. Very. So these four cards yeah. are all PSA graded, and the Marchoke, which I'm going to be keeping. Um, this is back when I was nine years of age, I had this card. And I've, I actually, the story of my Pokemon cards, you don't even know about this, Jamie. Um, I had pretty much the entire original base set and my dad sold them at a garage sale for $10. 10 bucks. Why do you tell me these things? I oh, know. There's someone out there that got the steal of a lifetime at a garage sale. I had it out there, which I shouldn't have done. I was super young, 10 years of age, pretty much when this card got made. I cried for about a week. 
literally a week. Yeah, I might cry. My sister had the same collection too. It was our collection, my sister and I. So for me, this Marchoke, it's the original 1995 card, um, or 1999 card. Um, it's a mint PSA 9, and uh, I'm pretty kind of stoked to have it. It's worth about $90, this Marchoke card, and I think I'm just going to hold on to it. So these are um, based off the TV show. Um, made by Tops rather than Wizards of the Coast, which did the other cards. So they're not as valuable, but they're really cool. And um, they are lower grades except for the nine. But um, just being how cool they are, they're worth a little bit more than what I paid. And I'm going to really love them in the collection for my own. So Jamie's collecting them and I'm collecting them as well. This one was a 2017, um, but we got it because it was a PSA 10. So, so fully PSA 10, I, top I of the range. I think it's worth 50. I paid 35. But I reckon at the end of the day that's definitely going to increase in value um, being Charmander PSA 10. So that's kind of the reasoning. Um, a lot of them basically just bought for the personal, but the fact that we've got PSA graded cards in a pawn shop was just super cool. And it all came from just checking the online store, noticing that they did have them out the back. They weren't on the shop front. These cards were seriously just sitting out the back. And yet again, we've been able to pull out some gold. Um, maybe not so much from a resale value perspective on this occasion, but still, Pretty rare and a pretty cool find in the pawn shops. Yes. Oh, you should um, you should quickly promote your channel. This will, yeah, promote your channel. All this right. is your spotlight, spotlight okay. moment. You got to do it. You got to do it correctly. Yeah. You got to really try and sell yourself here. If you're interested in seeing one of the greatest <laughs> channels on YouTube for everything reselling, everything hunting, see, I don't just sit there and show you what things are worth. I go through and I explain it all, and it is a great channel. Very I knowledgeable. Promise you, I promise you, you will learn something new, you will enjoy it. So go check me out. The link is in the description. I'm making them put it in there. What's your name? How do we find you? Everyday Flipper. It's on the screen right here. Uh, cover your face up with my logo here. <laughs> uh, it's there. Um, very enthusiastic about the channel. We upload every Sunday. Uh, hit that notification bell when you get over there to get that notification when they come out. But uh, every single Sunday, new vids, definitely go check them out. This video is going up on Sunday, so that means there'll be a video right now that you've probably just released. Yes. You've probably got a brand new video for the people to go and check out. And if you thought this video was good, I can guarantee you mine's better. <laughs> <laughs>